So welcome to the uh, Wednesday, November 7th, 2018 meeting of the Amherst Planning Board. So uh, I know that we have a public hearing tonight, so we'll get to that right at 7.05. So, um, which is in just two minutes. So the first order of business is approval of the minutes from the last meeting. Yes. So any comments on that? Happy to see you. Page C. Yeah, yeah, two C's. Okay. Um, page. Page okay. three. Page three. Right here. So C A T H Y and S C H O U. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, abstentions. So. Mary and Jeff, Steve. Yeah. And who, who moved? And who seconded? Steve, I forgot to answer the motion. <laughs> you seconded. Yeah, that's, that's the ticket. So it is 7.05. So I'm hello for the preamble. No. Hi. How about if I just wing it this just one? Wing. Yeah. So <laughs> in accordance with maybe we have a little more. Or you can just say in accordance with Mass General Law yeah. Chapter 4. In accordance with you'd think I would know this, right? <laughs> in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 15C, Scenic Roads, we are heading up public hearing regarding a proposed scenic wall removal at 294 Lever Road. So this meeting has been duly advertised in all the usual places. Correct. And normally what we do is we have the applicant give the pro talk about what's happening first, then we'll talk about the site visit, then we'll have plenty board discussion, then we'll open it to public hearing. So so we are the new owners, Mike and I, I'm Allison Saylor, and this is Mike Saylor, um, the new owners of 294 and 304 Levitt Road. They're two cottages that are next to each other on separate lots, but they're co-joined by sharing a well and other issues so that we kind of had to buy them both. And there's one driveway that was put in by the seller for 304, and we're requesting that we put in a driveway for 294 um, for that cottage. It's where the trailhead is. Um, that's just if you have a map in front of you. 294 has a trailhead. Um, and then the proposal is to, there's a little gap between the sugar maples. And we can squeeze in a nice little driveway that will head towards the cottage. Um, it'll look very much like the one that was done for 304. We are ready to hire the same person to put in the, the driveway. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, I don't know what was done with the other stones for 304's driveway, but I do know that I plan on being right there when they do the work, and I will move the stones and just 3D effect, fill out the uh, existing stone wall to be chunkier and a little squarer in places. So it's not going to go anywhere. It'll just be distributed to the left and to the right of where it is. Nice. So there was a um, site visit to, where was the site visit? Known today. Was today. So there was a site visit. And I, who was there from the, from the, raise your hand if you were. So Rob. And David. David and, and Mike. Mike. So would one of you want to give the report on the site visit? There's no written report. No written report? Well, um, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll discuss it. We, uh, we're, uh, we saw where the wall, it, it where the wall obviously is, and uh, the area that uh, is proposed to be removed uh, directly um, um, off the uh, main road, off the road. 
um, between uh, an exist two existing stands of trees on either side, which will not be uh, moved. Um, it's, there's a very steep drop off from the road level to the um, uh, flat area where the cottage uh, sits, uh, so there'll be a, little, a grade issue there, uh, which is not within our, our jurisdiction, I don't think. But um, it, it's clear that uh, a significant amount of stonework would be moved from the 15 foot um, cut, which is proposed, to uh, either side of it. I'm not quite sure where the uh, applicant is proposing to put the stones, but I'm presumably on either side of where the cut would be. Um, and um, that would result in a, a um, an interruption of the of a running stone wall, which is, goes for um, hundreds of yards. Uh, I don't know how far exactly, with several interruptions already in it. Hmm. Anything else on the site visit? Any discussion from the planning board? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, are we talking about general discussion? Or yeah, yeah, yeah there was general discussion. Okay, um, as, as I read the, the uh, Seeing Road bylaw, uh, the purpose of the bylaw is to protect the um, character of historic local roads by preventing the removal of key features, uh, stone walls. Um, and it seems to me that uh, there is no uh, in the bylaws, I can find no um, way in which um, we can uh, approve this because we uh, are charged with uh, protecting the character of local historic roads. And the removal of this of this 15 feet of, of uh, uh, historic stone walls would clearly change the character of that road. Now. The character of that road has been changed previously by the removal of other stone walls, a few other uh, actions, presumably of this body, although I don't know to the, for sure. Um, but it seems to me that um, we should not approve this because the only valuable purpose served is that of the individual property owners, and it, it does not correspond with the way the law seems to be written. Um, Look, um, sure, you can go ahead and respond. That's fine. I, I was under the understanding that every lot has the right to have a driveway in it, and we don't have a driveway. And the previous owners of the cottage would use a different way to get in, and we are going to use it as just one person living there, so we need a driveway there. So we see the site. I don't have a site. Oh, sorry. So this is a property we've been to a number of times, or a properties we've been to a number of times. So let's, let's go with Christine. I just want to ask a question that I'm familiar with the stone wall across the street. There's a bunch of homes that were built about 15 years ago, and I know the owners of those homes actually had the stone walls put in on the front of their property, so within the last 15 years. Do we know the history of? This previous, because it was the kitchen property, or whatever. Did he build this wall, or is it an old wall? The one right here. Yeah, like well, was it one built question. with the property? Because parts of it have a fence on it. And I don't know the answer. We don't know. Just yeah. to me, that is a different. You know, is it a hundred, two hundred year old historic wall, or is this a wall that was built? Twenty years ago, just to, you know, as an aesthetic thing that now we're holding to, a, you know. We know it's been changed because the last time we did a site visit on one of these properties, whoever it was that works for the Kittridge family talked about how he throw stones on, and he would actually add to the wall rather than exactly. So we had the joke about, do you need to get a permit to add to a scenic oh, wall? <laughs> So it's, you know, most walls like this change over time. You know, in other words, walking the wall is all about putting stones back into a stone wall. So 
I have a stone wall on a different property, yep. and I don't see evidence that this is a very old one. It's kind of angular, and it doesn't have very much moss and things growing on it. Yeah. So if somebody was to say, you know, do you know how old it is? I'd say no. Would I guess? I'd say quite new. You know, not not an ancient one. It's it looks like it's been built relatively recently, in my opinion. I would take the opposite opinion. It seems to me to be, and I'm not being an expert on stone walls, uh, but it appears to be so randomly arranged that it is clearly, to me, uh, a, an example of a wall that was originally built firmly and has kind of eroded over time into the kind of soft profile as opposed to the hard edge profile of a stone wall of that sort would have been if it would have been built you know, if we were in the 19th century. Uh, but this is clearly a, a question that we can't uh, uh, decide without archaeological evidence of some kind. I'm not but that, and that's not to say even a criterion is how old the wall is. It's really its contribution to the scenic character. You had your hand up. Yeah. You're going to be the tiebreaker. No, no, I'm, I'm, well, maybe. I, yeah. I, I don't. I, I doubt it. But, um, um, so I, I sympathize with uh, a lot. Leaving it stone dry, that makes sense to me. But I also agree that um, what is the point of having a scenic roads bylaw if, if we're not going to pay any attention to it? This, this has nothing to do with it. Um, we, this, as Steve said, this is the third time that we've had to, on this short stretch of, of road, make a decision about um, changing the character of of the road, and, and in each, the first two times, I think the board allowed the change to be made, and I think it degraded the scenic quality of the road. Um, and so, has it degraded now so much that, that it's lost, and, and it doesn't matter if, if further change is made? I, I don't know. Um, I, I just, I, just I, I, I find the scenic roads Quite a lot, extremely problematic and difficult. I, I, I think it's important, but it, but it doesn't really work. I, I, and I want to make one more comment about. So this is separate from decision about um, changing the, the wall or not. Um, the, the the easement for the. Um, um, Conservation trail, the trailhead. I noticed when we passed, um, the wall goes right up on the, on the north side of, of that little parking area. The wall goes right up to it and it stops. On the other side, on the south side of, of the parking lot, the wall, there's a wall that actually curves around or it defines the corner of, of the, of the um, driveway. And so I would suggest possibly as a compromise, maybe, that, that, the, that the part of the wall that's removed be, be moved over to, to define the north side of, of, the, of the driveway, of the, of the parking area for, for that drawhead, maybe, so that, so that it, it, it looks more like it's, it, it helps, it helps um, repurpose the, the wall um, in the, in the way. Could I ask for some clarification on that? I think I may understand what you're saying, but there's on the southmost side, the side most towards Amherst Center, it starts, then there's a little bit of a wall, then there's the trailhead, and then are you saying put more stones between there and where this new one is, which is like 10 feet or something? Um, so I, I, my, when, when we passed by, it looked like the wall um, on the south side made like a, a right turn into the into the driveway, into the parking lot. It goes down the lot line. A little bit, yeah. Yes. But on, on, on your side of it, or the north side of it, there isn't um, there isn't a, a, a perpendicular wall to the road. It's just parallel to the road. So I'm saying take, take the part from your highway and, and make it perpendicular. When you say our, 
side, are you saying next to the green fence? Because all that property is ours. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I, um, not next to the green fence, but but towards the fence. There's there's a little bit of a section there that doesn't have any stone. Board, but okay. I just need to know if we're moving them where we're putting them yeah. so that we follow what you want. Um, I will say that the trailhead is, um, again, as, as someone mentioned over here, it's very sharp and deep, so there's a lot of grading issues. So unless you're telling me exactly where it goes, I don't know even if it's that feasible to just take some and put them somewhere because it goes like this through the poison ivy. Yeah. And it's really just a question or a comment. Yeah, so we don't understand. Yeah. Uh, I could make a comment to yeah. the general question of you know what's the purpose of the scenic road. It is preventing us from taking 300 feet of stone wall away. We own 150 feet on one lot, 150 feet on another lot. So we're asking to take 15 feet away, not 300. So the scenic road does have a purpose. And you're supposed to do what you're trying to do, which is tell us what to do with the rocks when we move them. And I'm fine with that, because I want it to look pretty, too. Let's see what Christine has to say. So you were talking about it's a scenic road, and it's a pretty um, stone wall. And we have also on scenic roads, we have trees. And we come, and we they very often have to cut limbs off trees and scenic byways because of uh, why power wires and you know and so you're like trimming the tree but the tree is still there and as you drive you're like oh there's still a pretty tree there so to me I'm like they're just cutting a driveway in a long run of road the wall is still there it's still pretty so I guess what we're saying is like how much does it depreciate the scenicness that there's 15 feet of a break in a wall. I mean, these stone walls, farmers have used them for hundreds of years and they put breaks in them all the time because they got to get the cattle in and out or whatever they were using it for. So I think it's not that we're removing a whole beautiful scenic thing, we're just sort of trimming it. And that's sort of how I, you know. So, so I, I think everyone's right. <laughs> because I think that, um, in other words, what's the point of us of having this if, it's, if we're not protecting it? But then you also bring up the point that it's that runs in conflict with basically A and R, you know, in other words, the right to have a law. Um, in Massachusetts, if you have the frontage and it's a public way, you have a right to make that a buildable lot, so, and you have a right to access to that lot. So to me, it's the A and R law that runs in conflict with the scenic road law. So, you know, if I mean, I guess there ought to be something in the scenic road law that says you no longer have A and R. That's not your problem, but this is me just talking out loud. Then if there's a scenic road that we're trying to protect, then there ought to be some sort of a exception to the A and R to also protect it. But to me, the A and R approval not required is more, and I'm not talking about you guys, I'm just talking about generally, is more of a threat to scenic roads than removal of 15 feet of, of stone wall. But I'm sorry, someone had their... Yeah, uh, I, I kind of go back to what uh, Mr. Brown said earlier uh, about the ambivalent about the whole, the law itself. Um, but the, nonetheless, the law says what it says. Yeah. Um, and if we're charged with implementing law, as we are by Massachusetts by law and by the Amherst by law, yeah. it's our responsibility to protect the scenic fire road. Yeah. Um, and I suggest that uh, that there is a driveway to these two properties. They are together. They are apparently bound together. If there's only one water supply for the two of them, they're not going to be separable as a result of the, what the, the owners were saying. So that there's no reason why that second cottage uh, that for which this uh, stone wall break is being uh, proposed can't be served by the existing driveway, which comes directly into the, the other house. Uh, I understand that they're, they're two separate tenants, and, and, uh, but there's one owner, and uh, uh, it exists and it's apparently usable at this point. Uh, and uh, I don't think it's depriving the owner necessarily of the right of access to the other property. Uh, were you running any trees? 
trees or just stonewalls? There are no trees um, on that. I talked to the tree warden, and trees that are in his jurisdiction or their jurisdiction are on the other side of the wall, mm -hmm. and that side of the wall is it's got some peonies and some other plantings, but no trees. And it turns out where we're pro projecting to have the cut through, there are no trees. So right to the right and left of it, there's trees, but nothing to be removed. And I, I'd just like to respond a little bit to the common driveway um, thing. We are trying to make these be separate lots so that um, in, the future. in the future they can be sold separately. Um, We've already put, we have, we have the seller had to put paint tax that was shared, that has been separated the in the well future. The well can be moved if it needs We're to. We're going to do a new well. We are going to over time can be separate moved. them. Yes. And so this is part of the steps of separating them. Maybe to My reading of the law <clears throat> is that once the road has been designated as a scenic road, then if there are any of these sorts of changes, trees, stone walls, before anything can be done, it has to get approved by, a, by the appropriate body. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure. I mean, the, the, the town meeting designated this road in 1974. Lots of things have changed. We've described some of those changes. I think that um, today uh, that the, the owners of the, of the lot coming requesting this consistent with sort of the evolution and the development of the town and, and the people living in uh, various lots. It's not, I, I, would, I, I would be reluctant to hold, um, hold the, the, scenic by, the scenic law up as then things cannot change on this road ever. That this does not seem practical to me. And that this, if it undermines the value of the scenic scenicness of this road that'll be reflected in the owner's values the owner the value of the property itself you know if it's regrettable if to some it would be regrettable to others it wouldn't be to my mind our the role of the, this the board is is they come with a re reasonable petition cognizant of the impact aesthetically if we have conditions to Stipulate that would be that would be fine. I'm not quite sure. I don't didn't see what Rob saw with the with the trailhead, um, but that but that barring real sort of dis destruction of the the, the the value of the aesthetic. When I don't see that this proposal does, it should be approved. I would I would I would I would I would argue for approval. Yeah, I agree with the uh, attorney Levinson. <laughs> and I, I think the 15 foot section is, uh, is dwarfed by the 300 foot section that, that would be preserved and remain untouched. Uh, from, from a scenic standpoint, I think my eyes would focus on what's there and not, not what is missing. Did you just say part of the other Did you ever hand up your? No, I just wanted okay. to say that I would be okay. in favor of. Well, there isn't a 300 foot section that is being uh, retained. Uh, there are at least two breaks in the wall in that stretch already. Uh, it's, this is just one, this is one more break in what is already a broken stretch of many hundreds of yards of formerly solid stone wall. So it's just one more break, or maybe just is the wrong word, it is one more break in that series of, of uh, broken stone walls, stone wall. But we're not removing the rest of the stone walls. Yeah. That. And with that logic, we could propose, I guess, that we could That's lock okay. up the trailhead so that we can get the one that we really want as the owners. That would be. I, but can you please talk to the chair? Talk, talk to the chair. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, say it again. I'm just saying that with that logic of there's now would be three breaks in our 300 foot stretch of, of road, we could block up the trailhead as one option. It's a silly option. I'm not really suggesting no, I know, it. No, yeah, yeah. It's just being facetious here. No, but, I understand. Yeah. But, you know, that was that logic. You could come up to some pretty silly um, recommendations. What I thought the scenic road thing was to put the good conditions on that makes it yeah. look good and not make it ugly. And I'd be happy to have conditions of where to put the stones. That's very reasonable. 
but so it, it, it's also, and I'm going to step away beyond my profession, and I'm going to, but it's also true that if you have a driveway there now, giving access to both properties, you can have an easement. So an easement is a perfectly legitimate way of having two separate properties. Am I doing a journey of it? No, I think that, 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 yeah. that, that's another way to do it. Yeah. I, I, you know, potentially not. Yeah, so in other words, that's very common that you have to cross another property to get to your property as long as there's an easement. So and that would enable D to go down. Yeah, me. yeah. Uh, I, I want to make sure that we all understand that the purpose of the scenic road bylaw is not to make the road scenic, but to prever preserve yeah. its scenic qualities yeah. as they currently yeah. exist. Yeah. Interesting. What's the history on the, on the for the trailhead? Is that? I think that's the town um, access there. The town probably gained uh, an easement over there. When did that happen? The there, there is no easement oh, for the no town. Easement? It never, yet. Yet, it never completed. Oh. So it's effectively at our discretion whether it continues or not. So you own the section that is now used as a parking lot? Yes. Okay. And the trail. Of the trail. There's yeah. nothing. There's nothing on the deed. It's too great then. Yep. So, absent any recommendation or condition from this group, what is the plan for placement of the stones to be removed? I was going to just put them in different places on the existing wall to thicken it up and straighten it out because it's a bit squishy. Um, and I can certainly concentrate on the trailhead side if somebody puts that in as a condition. I'm happy to do that. It'll probably be me doing it. Um, the stones seem to be mostly people-sized, but if, ne if necessary, uh, uh, some big equipment could move some of the bigger ones if they're underneath a big one. I'll, I'll get it rolled into some strategically nice place. My, I'm a master gardener, so I actually love stone walls and will make it look gorgeous. Is it fair to say there are portions of the wall that could benefit from reinforcement? Oh, yes. Itself? Oh, yes. It's, it's a bit tumbled down in places. This will be good for the rest of the wall. And Christine, did you have your hand up? Only that I noticed um, on the application it says about, about 15 feet. And then when I looked at the map, it said 14 feet. And then I was thinking about, I know that the building commissioner has some set because we've been flat and we had our driveway. And I couldn't remember what the maximum would say, because there is a maximum that they allow you to put in for your curb for your driveway. I didn't know if you knew that, Chris. I've been trying to look at Well, I know the um, standard width for an um, individual driveway is 12 feet. Okay. And then when you get down towards the actual uh, intersection of the road, I think you can have 24 feet, 24 mm -hmm. foot wide opening when you're right at the road. But the driveway itself would be 12 feet. Just okay. But so then on the other part was it does say 14 feet. I mean, is it? I measured the one that was the minimum that. No, I just measured or? the one that was already done and got approved by the plan board. So mm -hmm. I said 14, and somebody changed it to 15. Which <laughs> I didn't do. But 14 or 15, it'll be like the other one that's already cut through. And it does need a flare. I don't know what the technical term is because otherwise you whack into it. How do we move forward? Great. I'll move to approve the request for the condition that the stone be repurposed to repair the existing sections of the wall on the owner's property. Second. All right. Discussion? I think repair may not, not be the right word uh, because the, where I believe the owner is planning to put the stones, I'm not entirely sure, is a place where the wall is in exactly the same condition as the wall is where it's going to be removed. So it would be to augment or something like that, but it's not going to repair it because it's, it's going to look the way it, the, the wall currently is. Well, my suggestion was based on the owner's 
statement that there are portions of the wall that would benefit from infill. My, if I could further clarify repair, it means to infill those portions of the wall which would benefit aesthetically from infill from the stones to be reused. Well, which is, of course is a matter of opinion. Yeah. Because I would dispute that. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. the character of the wall is the way it is. And uh, should it remain. I don't mind augmenting. Augment? Uh, I'm happy to, use it, happy to use your <laughs> I don't think that's quite Michael's. That's not my issue. <laughs> I think the condition, as I, I'm sure this is going to be approved, but um, uh, the condition is a little unclear without, without that change. But that's so thank you. Okay, yeah. more discussion. Yeah. I wonder if Mr. Stone would repeat the condition. Uh, that the stone to be removed be reused to augment other portions of the existing stone wall on the property. I would actually use restore. 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 I'm happy. Restore and, and augment. <laughs> I don't understand what augmenting a wall would really mean in the yeah. Yeah. building it up higher, basically, or wider. I think that. Okay. Just yeah, which is what I think the, the, the uh, I think the goal is to use the stone in the wall to make the stone wall relatively more wall-like. Yeah. Which is why we still would be a better word that augment. But anyhow, so do you use a whole substitute? I, I take it back. No, I think you had to have been there. I like the. I, and I've been there twice today. I wasn't able to make the, the trip today. Who am I for store? I'd like to vote on the store. The store. Who was the second to vote? Oh, Repeal and replace. <laughs> okay. Oh, right. All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed? Uh, one. And abstention? One. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any paperwork or anything that needs to be given to contractors or anything? This isn't written in stone until the uh, lab. <laughs> I can send you an email. Okay, so we just. We'll, we'll get it done quickly. Thank you. So I, I think we're going to move on to item four old business because I think you're here for that. Um, next door. 434 North Pleasant Street, Terry Gates, discussion about conditions. So this is SPR 2017 M402. So take it away. Uh, there's, there's two things going on here. One so thing. I have to introduce yourself. Oh, I thought you just. Okay. Yeah. I'm you Jerry Gates. Yeah. Uh, I'm a member. I wear two hats. I'm a member of the church, and I'm a member of Craig Stores Board. Um, and uh, what the concern is here is a shielding of, of some form from the parking lot that the university has at the back of the trailer area, which we do have two trailers in there which are used to bring food and uh, bottles that we turn in for, uh, for food, uh, for the shelter and for the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, food pantry that the church runs. Um, and I agree that there is a snowball set in there that I used to call the, the uh, church lot. Uh, and there are a couple of storage units that the church uses. Uh, the shelter uh, itself, when the original permit was given two years ago to change the trailer from feeding people to just a plain office and resource center. Uh, so there, there are two things here, the, the church property uh, and the trailer which the uh, permit was given on to Craig Stores to change it to an office and, and resource center. Um, I have met uh, because the church needs to expand. It needs to, it's very, very crowded. Uh, 
and I have met a number of times with John Kennedy, the Vice Chancellor, and he has not uh, ever mentioned to me anyway uh, the condition that, that exists there. Uh, although uh, I think it's more a church property problem than, than probably Craig Storrs problem. Craig Storrs does own the trailer. Uh, and uh, this afternoon, after you left, uh, I did meet with the, uh, the executive director of Craig Storrs Shelter and with the, uh, some of the people that, uh, that run that shelter underneath the, the executive director. And they're very, were very strongly against the fence because they felt people could hide in there. And they can't see them. Uh, the police do, uh, not that we have a lot of problems, but the police do come in every night and, and they circle the area, both the university police and uh, the church sets on Amherst jurisdiction, so the uh, Amherst police do come in. Uh, they know all the shelter people and uh, there's, there's a presence there. The concern of, of the uh, people that are operating the shelter it is this creates a hiding place for for many of the uh, or could concern a uh, hiding place for the people uh, and I think when we, we had site visit uh, it started out with maybe a tree uh, I, I forget your name but uh, uh, one tree uh, I have no problem I like the tree idea better, it kind of breaks things up, but I, I think more like six trees ought to be planted there. Um, and, and I think then that gives a vision for the, uh, the police to see through and for us to see through. Uh, because the, the shelter resource center is open at times that it's dark. Uh, so that's... I guess that's the position. Nobody had a problem today with the shelter inside with the office set up that they're using that you granted before. And one of them is the, the problem here is screening. And uh, uh, we would be willing from the church, anyway, my church hat now, uh, uh, is to put some uh, uh, trees in there and uh, keep them trim to uh, uh, a static uh, position. Uh, all of there's some big pines in there already. Uh, so that would be the position, I guess, that, uh, that I would present to you for thought. So um, at the site visit, um, there were three members of the board who were there. And they did talk about um, putting up a stockade fence. And I took the liberty of just sketching where that would go and um, you know, getting a picture of a stockade fence. So I think you, know, you might want to just look at it so you understand the full conversation. Do they have it in their package? No, they don't. I, I just made one copy and I gave it to you. And so I just okay. want to pass it around. So, so you can just pass it around and, and see what the you know, board members who are on the site talked about, and then um, you know, we'll get a better understanding. Go ahead, Rob. Okay. So, um, site visit report? Yes, please. <laughs> I, um, <coughs> there are four of us. Um, the, we originally talked about this a year or two ago. Uh, because there was a lot of stuff in the store behind the, the trail. That's a, most of that has been cleaned up. Um, it's much more tidy than it was before, but it still does look like the back of, of, of you know, the back storage area of, some, of something. So it, it, did, it did seem like it was uh, something that it could um, screen it a little bit, it would present a nicer. Um, Front to, to the university, and I, 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 I prefer bushes or small trees to a fence. I did this afternoon. <laughs> oh, 
I think that would be better. And I don't think it needs to be six trees. I think I think one or two <coughs> bushes would, would do the trick, but you know, whatever, whatever you come up with. Um, so so for me, for me the issue is when you stand um, in, in the UMass parking lot, which is you know 30 yards away from the trailer. Um, at least my eye was drawn to the to these um, ten gallon buckets or whatever they were at the at the snow plow. If there were a bush there or a tree there, I think your eye would be stopped by that. It would belong necessarily to, to the other stuff. And so that's that's I just want something to draw my eye rather than have the snow plow right now. That's that's my Good luck to see. Anyone? Yeah, Christine? Um, I was at the site visit. The only comment I'll have is that behind the trailer, it looks like a shop yard. Okay. It looks, you know, like a little mini kind of DPW thing kind of going on. There's a couple of trailers, there's a golf cart, there's all these, like, you know, equipment, and there's sheds. Um, I, and it's not attractive looking. It looks like they're doing work, and it's good work that they're doing. But I don't. I think where they are exposed. I think if they had a fence, then they could just get on with their good work, and they wouldn't have to worry about the mess they're making, or if another golf cart showed up, or whatever, um, and they could just keep it tidy. In regards to safety. We're not talking about a full enclosure, we're just talking about an L um, that runs part of the property line, not the whole property line. And I will ask um, if there is lighting on the back of the trailer, and if there is lighting, is it motion sensor? Because that's what I would suggest if you were worried about having people congregating or hanging out there. Can you want to respond to that? The, uh, there are two two lights on the back, the down lights, that was requested by the uh, planning board originally. Uh, they don't flood the whole area. It's a down light. Um, they're not motion. They're, they're on all the time. Uh, the, from my position, the uh, once the fence is up, I think the uh, executive director and the people that that they're actually in the shelter working with the homeless people uh, is that once they enter that area, it's blocked off. They have to come back out of that area again, and that's what they're concerned about. We had that problem between uh, Gordon Hall. The, the building was built on the south side of the church, and the uh, problem was they would travel up through there and. Uh, we're leaving things in bushes. And if we weren't paying attention, then they'd be sleeping in the corner. It's very hard to see. Uh, so we've changed that and put a, a fence up there. Uh, but that's a different kind of fence. It mainly keeps them from traveling through. Uh, this fence would also keep them from traveling through, and that's one of the concerns that, that the uh, staff had. Uh, now, we could do we could take all the pails you saw sitting there or, or uh, remove all of those. The two trailers operate to bring cans and bottles from the, uh, uh, from the uh, uh, landfill, which the town has been letting us do for a number of years now, and that money goes into food. Um, the other trailer that's there goes to the uh, food bank and it's set up so that the uh, the lifts at the food bank, rather than handling one box at a time for half a ton of food, it just sets it in the trailer. And those are the uh, two things that uh, uh, are there. The golf cart is operated to clean the, uh, for a bit to keep the town, center of the town cleaned and that's been about six years that's been used so that's parked there. Uh, close to the trailers and uh, the batteries are charged uh, there each night. But the pails we could get rid of. The snow plow, I'll find another place to put it uh, somewhere. Uh, 
I guess I could take it to my house, <laughs> uh, <laughs> put it in my garage, uh, and I think that, and then plant the trees. I think the trees is the better, as far as the staff is concerned. They're the ones responsible for. Uh, we run a behavior-based shelter. We don't run a shelter that that uh, people can. Uh, our shelter can. They can come in drunk or on drugs. They have to behave themselves. We do have, uh, there's only one other shelter in Western Mass that's behavior based. And uh, I have to go before the state every three years to override uh, the permit issue because the church is not fully sprinkled, only the places that the people sleep and, and are using. So Rob has to. Uh, turn my application down when we apply for the shelter, and then that goes down to a, a Boston. Uh, I, I don't mean to interrupt, yeah. but if we could just yeah. stick to the. <laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, so uh, for me, the issue is mostly the pails. Um, I don't have a problem at all seeing the, the trailers and the big car. I, I think that would be fine. Even the, even the snow plow is not. Damage problem, except that it has cones around it, which I think kind of looks trashy to me. But that's you know, my opinion. So, so if the, if the, if the pails were gone and the and the snow pile was moved, you know, next to the building or something, instead of having um, cones around it in, in, the, in like in the middle of the yard, that would solve the problem for me. We would have no trouble in moving the pails and the cones. Yeah, right. So instead of a fence and bushes? Yeah. Okay. I was just going to suggest maybe a compromise is just some evergreen bushes that are yeah, screening, that's, that's, but yeah. people can't hide within. Mm. So it's in pots or in the ground? <laughs> no, I guess so specific. Yeah. It would be in the ground as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If it's in pots, you get to water them. And Take care of them. Yeah, so I worry about trees, you just see through trucks anyway. So right. sometimes this, you know. Yeah. So, so my, my concern would be that once something goes in the ground and grows, then it becomes permanent. So this has always been seen as a temporary. Uh, uh, and that, I, mean, I was just reading through the conditions where you. Well, the church is still working on. Yeah. Uh, we got to add on. We got to add something on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the question is why? And. Uh, uh, the trailer then, in anything that we've drawn up, has included uh, a private place for the shelter within the church building. So the shelter, the trailer would be gone, and all that stuff you're concerned about would, would disappear. Yeah. Hopefully, with three three years or so. But, so I'd be okay with like our revivy. I just want I don't know where the map went to Kristen. Um, I think Mr. You know, I, I just would want to identify what section. I, I think it needs to be more like one or two. I think it needs to be a little round of our revivy. Um, and just the other thing to consider this is a Yeah, just where the you know, if we delineate where we would want to put the um, bushes. And just one thing to remember, like, is um, what's been said is this this whole lot and what's going on is sort of in flux, and there are plans. It, it, five years from now, it still could be like this, or it could be something different. And I think we have to remember that the abutter right now is a parking lot, so that's a low level of, like, caring in a way. But in a few short years, there could be a, a P3 development at, of various natures, and suddenly they would care. So my thinking is this, is this, it is maybe temporary, but is this our one shot of like making this area look neat and tidy so that there isn't a problem down the road? Yeah. Are you on the side of the fence of bushes or on the... <laughs> um, I mean, uh, you know, I don't want to put them to undue expense. You know, yeah. why I thought a wooden stockade would work is because maybe they could get a good price or donation. I know they work with some developers who might be able to help them. You know, it's like 30 bucks a run or something. And he does have great labor who could probably dig the That's holes true. and put the fence in, so that would save them money. It also puts on revenue. Yeah. 
And then I do understand the safety part, but I think, and I don't know if this would have to be part of it, I know we're into the downcast lighting, that's very important, but in something where you do make a fence, you might want a spotlight that is motion you know, sensitive that lights up in that area, but. The other I thing that we would be, that, that might be there is, you had a, from two years ago, you had a look-see in two years, and it might be that this comes back to the board again, in a three-year period, uh, in which it would come come up with a site visit again. I wouldn't be opposed to that. Chris? It's hard to put it. You, you can't really put a condition on this kind of thing that you're doing now, because there's no document that's going to come out of it other than minutes of a meeting and maybe an email or a letter. So you can't put a condition on, on something like this, only on a decision. I see. How did you do it this time? It was on the decision. Yeah. Yeah. How do we move forward? Pails. <laughs> Pails and cones. <laughs> Arbor Lady. Stockade fence. <laughs> Nothing. I, I'd be willing to say fence or for the line that has been drawn, either fence or Arbor Lady or Harvey. I, I don't want to muddy anything, but in the, as I understand it, I mean, this isn't that the, the condition that was put on the previous site plan decision was that a landscape plan would be submitted, and one hasn't been. And, and that's what we're talking about here, it seems to me, being a layman, like a person. And so I think for the purpose of you know, instead of spinning wheels, if, if we could add, I would, I would think that we would be better informed if an actual landscape plan was submitted to us by the date in, by before March, so we could see what the proposed types of whatever screen is, yeah. and so that we don't have, yeah. that, so that it's just clearer. Good, good solution. <laughs> So moved. So that's my motion. Okay. <laughs> says that. I'll second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Common sense. Good. <laughs> um, any discussion on the motion? All in favor, raise your hand. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Gates, do you want to keep these? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Or if there are end of season sales now that are going on, that you want to take advantage of, and then get to us by the next one or something. Mm -hmm. But it would be a uh, buy a holiday tree and then donate it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Could be. A loving Christmas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a voice guy involved. So I'm gonna move us back. Well let's just finish up section four. Are there any topics now reasonably anticipated for old business? I'm gonna take us back to um, item two, uh, planning and zoning, zoning subcommittee for you. Uh, so we are we are proceeding with our our planned um, summary of uh, zoning issues to present to the council. We're making progress. Uh, um, our, our latest thinking is that we will, our executive summary, um, so to speak, will be a focus on the on downtown issues, um, form based code, uh, parking. Um, um, those, those sorts of things, things that have come up in, in the council campaign often. And so we're aware that people are, are, are thinking about them and that the council is likely to want to start talking about them sooner rather than later. So, so that's, that's our, our thought, is that, is that we will have uh, something along those lines as sort of an executive summary. Um, and, but we were also um, informed tonight that the, the committee that is working on aligning uh, the old charter with the new charter or, or town bylaws or, or whatever the um, uh, 
various general bylaws and so on, aligning those with the charter. They have, that committee has come out with a list of, of specific items to be changed in the zoning bylaw. Um, and I'm probably not going to say this correctly, but, but basically um, the question is whether, whether there needs to be a public hearing by the planning board ASAP or, or, um, or if, it, if the director has to come from the council, which is not even seated, to the planning board to, to hold a public hearing. So we are we are we are tentatively thinking about having a public hearing at the end of the month if the core planning work can be uh, achieved. End of the so, month of November. Of November, so, so that we can present a, 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 a set of amendments that have had a public hearing, so the council can immediately accept them. And I haven't seen the list, but I know that there is just off the top of my head there are such on things as the size of the planning board, which is specified mm -hmm. as nine. And there's also the um, requirement for a site plan review approval, which is six, which is also specified. So I'm sure these are all outlined in there. I don't remember that specifically. The other things that are in there are or references, references to uh, the select or will be yeah. references to the council. Yeah, but there's something weird about the um, Said that two thirds of the planning board, or no more than no less than five, must be. Oh, is that is that what Chris clarified this afternoon? That is in the rules and regs, the thing that you're referring to. Rules and regs, um, okay. But I did um, get in touch with Bill Bard today, and um, he's confirmed that for a special permit, um, the planning board, a, a group of seven planning board members, would need to have five members vote in the affirmative for a special permit. Right, and then there was something that um, was more specific, in the, I guess it's in the rules and regs. The yeah. rules and regs yeah. talks about that too. So rules and regs will have to change yeah. when the planning board shrinks and this new um, way of governing comes into effect. So what do we do in the in-between? So the planning board on its own can change the rules, and when there is, that's not a, we have to hold a public hearing, but we can, so we, if we're going to meet at the end of November, we should have the changes to rules and regs which have not been the purview of this group, right? Because they're only looking at bylaws. I don't think we, I think that would be a task, um, what should I say, challenge, to do that by the end of November. But okay. I think you could do it by, say, the first week in December if you wanted to do it by December 5th. Yeah. You could hold a look at me. Yeah. Oh, but you were talking about Yeah, because we're going to have that really weird period where we're a seven-person board. Uh, mm -hmm. This came up with a whole quorum issue also. Remember when we were supposed to, yeah, whatever. Okay, so let's, I'm sorry to take us, yeah, Greg. So, I'm sorry, for all your randomness, I think there were two action items for the planning board that came out of the zoning subcommittee. The first is to determine if the board is able to meet on the 28th in the case that town council recommends we do so and hold a public hearing about yeah. this item Robin describing. So. That's a Wednesday? Yes. yes. So this isn't my last planning board meeting then after all. <laughs> so, Wednesday after Thanksgiving. We're just, yeah, yeah again, the term here is a possibility. Yeah, and, um, so and I'm, I'm available. Um, yeah. Who's is, not available on the 28th? Who's not available? Okay. And so you're the only person who's not available. And then the other item, Rob uh, could probably speak some more. All right, so. Um, one of the specific items that has been, um, no, I don't want to find my it. it's just too confusing. <laughs> um, one of the specific items that, that has been identified is, um, is a change to section 8.42 of the zoning bylaw, which is about non-conforming and temporary signs. And the, the action item that the committee has identified is the committee has updated the committee updated the reference to the sign regulation of the bylaws with the new bylaw. The committee also replaces the select board's authority to regulate signs and extend six inches or more over the public way with the town manager's authority. With the town manager's authority. But the committee also believed that this authority could rest with the board of license commissioners for the town council itself. And I, um, I think personally, and you know, there are arguments against it. 
that um, replacing uh, an appointed authority, or an elected authority, the select board's authority to regulate size is like seven, six inches or more, with an appointed authority, the town manager, seems like um, substance, so you know, some, this much substance, but some, more substance. And I would prefer to recommend that, that it would be uh, replaced with the council's authority. It's also an elected authority. Now, the argument against it is that um, in either case, it's an executive authority. The select board acts as an executive when they make that authority, when they make that decision, and the town manager would also be acting in an executive authority. So here's the point I mean, that it's like, you, know, you just hit right on the head that the select board was hybrid. It was both executive and legislative, because it was legislative because it was part of town meeting, and it was, well, it is. So select board was, um, elected by the town, but they serve both as executive and then as legislative. And so whether or not the intent of this was a legislative or executive, to me it sounds executive, but is that our goal or is that, yeah. So so my, I would just, um, if this is advertised or, or, or posted on an agenda, um, I would not want to represent it as these are just no, they're not. Yeah, they're just changing. These are more existential, or yeah. I would want to to call out that this is this yeah. is you know, making a change that 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 change, transfers authority from one kind of no, I agree. It's to another kind of thing, so it should be clear to the public that that's yeah. what's happening. So I totally agree with that. Whereas most of these other ones are, are, are not really that. And I'm just wondering if we should punt that to the new town council. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, I guess, and to further clarify, you know, Rob requested of Jeff Kravitz that the committee make that change, and Jeff wanted to hear the opinion of the full planning board on the matter before. On this particular issue? Yes. To me, it sounds executive, but. <laughs> well, yeah. so in the current world, the select board is in charge of the right of way. In the new world, the town council will be in charge of the right of way. So, in that, my mind, that, it makes that. sense to have it be the town council who's in charge of determining whether a sign can hang over into the right of way by six inches. And then, if the town council determines that it's cluttering up their schedule and they don't want to deal with this anymore, they can um, transfer the authority to the um, town manager. That's yeah. what I think. I, I agree with that philosophy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, things that are ambiguous. I would think would go to the town council for disposal, uh, so they could choose to delegate authority. But I don't know. I, I'm speaking about my papers for sure. But, what was, but most of the others really had to do with something like that. Yeah. So, so first one is the committee replace would replace town meeting's authority to amend the zoning map with town council. Yeah. So those are obvious ones. Yeah. yeah. So wherever it's. Town meeting was unabashedly always legislative. Yeah. Um, there's another one that they have on the list that also is um, not just uh, um, clarifying. It's 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 to change the zoning bylaw um, section seven point one zero six entry and exit driveways to conform with the state fire code. Um, that is something that. Um, we have, we have, in other cases, had to change the bylaw to conform with state law. And we had to hold a public hearing for that issue in the town meeting. And it was, you know, we called it um, technical fixes or, or housekeeping or whatever. That's, that's um, I think that should also be called out as something that is, you know, we're changing language. Um, to are not making a change. Oh, they're not making a change? Yeah. They were just brought to their attention. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That we should be changing. They're, they're not suggesting that, that part of the uh, motion. So, do you want to take a vote on whether that um, the language of 8.42 with regard to the preliminary signs should be changed in this um, recommendation to town council? So moved. Second. Wait. Oh, that was okay. So, motion, second. Discussion? Everyone, yeah. What are we looking at? 
Um, oh, yeah, so I have copies of this, but I can't find the copies. I'm kind of lost here. I yeah. Yeah. I'm lost in yeah. the weeds, too. Yeah. <laughs> so this has to do with the zoning bylaw, that as we move to a new form of government, these are the parts that this committee has found. Now I understand. Yeah. What, what are we changing? 8.42, um, which gives authority to now to the select board to approve signs that overhang more than six inches into the public right away. So really the two choices are delegate that authority to the executive branch, which is the town manager, or delegate it to the town council, which is the legislative branch. Because mm -hmm. it's not clear in this case. Who has it now? The select, select board, but the select board is this weird hybrid thing, where it's both an executive it has both executive authority and it has legislative authority by being part of town meeting. So will the town council? No. Town council is not an executive. But it's strictly legislative for sure. Yeah. Um, and so the question is whether this, whether 8.42 should be revised to be the, the oversight for the sign extending into the public right of way should be under the town council? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or the town manager. The town manager. And it makes sense to me just that, that the town council decided. <laughs> I would agree. Because then the town council can then also has authority to change that. Yeah. yeah. I think we should do that. But that was a motion, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, okay. so, so uh, thanks for allowing me to catch up to speed. You yeah. were you were no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I agree with you. <laughs> All in favor, raise your hand. All right. Unfortunately, that wasn't the vote to change it. That was just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the, and the determination about the meeting is if you need to hold a public meeting on November 8th, 28th, you're all available except for Ms. Grimmel. Yeah. yeah. Are we also meeting the 21st? Yeah, that's uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, it's the night before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Oh, good. Yes, we are. <laughs> there we go. We should be. We should be out by ten. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Again, I, I apologize because I think I was lost. The purpose of the November, the proposed November twenty eighth meeting, is to approve conforming language to amend the yes. by, zoning yep. bylaw. Yep. It's to hold that open in case town council says we need to hold a public hearing as the planning board. Ah, uh, in order to town attorney, town attorney. Yeah, all right. Yeah. In order to approve, in order to approve zoning bylaw revisions. Yes. Got it. Okay. So there's one other little glitch, which is that when um, town meeting approved all those um, the new definitions in the under the marijuana uses bylaw. Um, we failed to say at the bottom and renumber all the subsequent definitions. So, um, technically speaking, uh, we have to come back to the planning board to hold a public hearing to renumber uh, all of those subsequent definitions. And then we go to the town clerk and say the town uh, planning board held a public hearing and they agreed, and so this goes through. So, we may try to roll that into this meeting on November 28th if we can figure out a way to do it. Okay. So, so don't, we don't have the authority to change the zoning bylaw. So we're going to hold this public hearing and we'll make a recommendation to the new town council, yes. which convenes right. mm -hmm. five days later. Yeah. And then they can do with it what they want. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't the, what, didn't the town meeting pass something about non-substantive changes? They um, did. Yeah. That would allow this to be done without a meeting? No, it's yeah. in public hearing and planning board. It's instead of going to town meeting to change all the numbering, we go to the planning board to hold a public hearing. Got it. Yes, they I understand. agree okay. that That's right. and then the town clerk can Process. do all this. Oh, the town clerk can do all this. The non substantive yeah, changes, but right. not these yeah. changes okay. that are being right. proposed. Okay. This has to be done by town council. Okay. Tell them. Town Yeah, you're right. C I L. Yeah. C I L. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So we're going to meet November 28th, but first we need to get an opinion. Let's yes, we're yeah. getting an opinion tomorrow. Okay. So we will well, we need it immediately. And this will be the only yes. thing on the agenda. Yes? Yes, too fast. No. As far as I know. Okay. More? No. Okay. Public comment. So thank you for. Keeping to move, keeping moving the ball forward. 
Uh, new business topics that reasonably anticipated. Mm -hmm. A and R. Yes. I see one. An A and R. Yeah. Let me explain. Um, so this is a piece of property at the corner of. Um, Redwood Drive and East Pleasant Street, and why don't I pass it to Perry and then I'll pass it is down that Joe, Is that Joe um, Mistake? It is um, Jennifer Polyrela. Okay, so next who owns there. this property, and um, someone is proposing to purchase it, and what the purchaser would like to do is to Divide the property in two, and there's enough lot area and frontage to do this. And um, we're going to divide the property in two and build a house on the um, on the lot that's being created. Yeah. Sounds like a good plan. See? What? That's on the north side. East. East side. Right. On the east side of East Pleasant Street and the south side of Grandma Drive. South side of Grandma Drive. South side of Grandma Drive. I think you got north, south, east, west figured out. Yes. The south side of Grandma Drive. Yep. Right on the corner? Yeah, right on the corner. It's a sort of oh, double side. Like a, they have like a farm stand here. Like a set back. See? Like a little farm stand. Yeah, I'm trying to picture. I thought I knew. I guess I don't know that corner as well as I don't believe. <laughs> okay. Do we authorize Mr. Schreiber to sign this, endorse this plan? Yeah, thumbs up. <laughs> Can I just say it for a I understand yeah, they're proposing it. something rather innovative in terms of architecture. So. Mm -hmm. um, okay, onward. Upcoming ZBA? Um, the only upcoming ZBA one that I uh, know about is, um, I think I told you about this before, Petrucci's building is being um, transformed into a, another brick oven pizza restaurant um, called Porta. And so that's coming before the ZBA sometime soon. Looks like they're ready to open. And they have the lights yeah. over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they really, they jumped the gun a little. <laughs> yeah, they <are. laughs> Did they, they go to the GRB for all the cookies? Yeah. So they jumped the gun on that too. <laughs> <laughs> they're very eager. They're gun jumpers. <laughs> they certainly are. And the colors for uh, those at GRB? No, they haven't. They had the color stuff before they came to the GRB. <laughs> In but fact, that's your purview, right? There are colors. Well, we proved what was on the paper, which were the same colors as they already had as they already had up. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, what are you going to do? <laughs> They're from New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, I got the guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm from New Jersey. Oh, yeah, that's a good catch. Good catch. <laughs> I met, I met the two guys in the parking lot a couple months ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, upcoming SPP, SPR, SUV? Um, 236 North Pleasant Street is coming back. Um, the office building across from when is Pleasant. Okay. So they're just renewing their permits that they have already. Okay. And what about the mixed use building on Northeast Street, Southeast Street? East Pleasant Street? No, the one down by oh, Auto oh, oh, Express. Oh, yes. Oh, so that's coming too. I mean, that will come eventually. It's gone through the Conservation Commission. Um, it's um, Amir McCheese's building yeah. right across from uh, Cumberland Auto Farms Express, yeah. on Southeast Street, in right next oh, to right, the Florence right. Savings yeah. Bank. Yeah. Um, so he's proposing a three-story, I think, um, mixed use building there, with I believe he's got 68 apartments mm -hmm. and some. Um, some retail space on the ground floor. But not by November 28th. No. Not by November 28th. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> okay. Uh, Planning Board Committee and Liaison Reports. PDPC. Uh, community Preservation Act. So we need to actually talk about this. 
You do. You need but to how do we talk about someone. this? You need to nominate someone who's going to still be around after December. Because we don't know who those are. Or... So I had a conversation with the town manager today. And the way I think it's going to work, and we seem to agree, is that all the people who are moving forward um, past 2018 um, will still be on the board. So unless the town, Yeah, unless the town council chooses to replace them. But yeah. probably not. So they'll be moved forward. There are four members of the planning board whose terms expired in June with <laughs> extensions to the end of December. And um, so I would say you shouldn't probably choose from among the four who whose terms will end at the end of December because I don't know what's going to happen with them. Uh, but you should choose from the other five who are left. And I think Harry was the liaison to CPAC previously, and she said that she's not able to serve uh, in that role anymore. Um, so. so one solution would be to forget her request. <laughs> and, in other words, so she could serve until she... No, you don't want to say that. Yeah, it's very demanding. Okay, okay. Oh. It, it is very demanding? But, I mean, it has periods where I've been meeting every so week or every two yeah. weeks, and it's very long, and I really can't take another. Is there a certain time of year that yeah. that Yeah, so what, they, they have it. I don't remember exactly, but there are two, two, twice a year that they have like a series of proposals that mm -hmm. come in, so yeah. you have to read all the proposals, sit through the presentations and questions, mm -hmm. and then eventually have meetings. But they're actually a lot of fun. I really enjoy doing it. It's a great committee to be on, but uh, it's really time consuming and especially and then, and then when I said forget your request, what I meant is to because if there's no work right now there is. Oh, there is. Okay. So I was gonna say that we could different. settle this until no, yeah. Okay. I was gonna say about the busy times of year. It's my understanding it's December through February or March mm -hmm. roughly. But sometimes busiest. you start meeting like sometimes you have to prepare. So there was a time where we actually worked on the draft of the proposal very intensely for like a few months in a row. So it depends. Mm -hmm. Right now the proposal, like the draft is done, but usually there's a, a time for questions and answers and then you actually assess the proposal. So for every, like for the twice a year event, there are like different blocks of time. And I don't mean to... Um So I'm going to go off the planning board. So uh, so we'll be down to eight on December, whatever it is. Third. December third. Yeah. December third. So, but um, and we, we don't have to. Yeah. Three other planning board members whose term expires then, Mr. Jimsick, Mr. Crowner, and Mr. Yagi. Okay. So um, one of them will need to not be on the planning board anymore after December third. But the other two can apply. The other two the can apply to stay or can stay. Through December, until you, until and then okay. the practice has been that people stay on the board until they're replaced. So I think you know we can count on being good through December. Things may need to be clarified after that. And the two people that had um, um, expressed an interest, one was Rob, and the other one was who was the other one? I just had a question of why they need more details. Okay. So you had not specifically put your, because I hate to load the five that we know are staying yeah. up with more things yeah. if they haven't expressed an interest. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so I did find out that they don't know when they're meeting. They, um, they will meet whenever is appropriate given the number of people who are there and their schedules. So they're going to have to come together and work it out. Is that usually a day thing? It's usually at night, night but... Um, oh. As an example, up until the last round, it was extremely inclusive, and the last round it wasn't. So it was, so I had to work around everybody else's schedule, and it was very difficult. But usually, the practice in the previous years is that they check with everyone and make sure that everyone can do it, and then they convene. Like it's usually at night; it's around six or seven. Also, occasionally at five, but. I'd be willing to take that on, I think, if, if no one else feels they have the time for it. And you're one of the continuing. I, I, I think I am. Am I not? Chris? Yeah. Yes. 
So you would need to, someone would need to nominate Mr. Bert Whistle. Well, and let's see if, yeah. Let's see if there's Did you want to, did you want to take that on too? Well, I know Rob volunteered first, but you're one of the ones in the, um, <laughs> in the Bob Arnott. In the way. So do, yeah. not get, so are we waiting to find out, like, so since Rob first expressed interest, uh, can we just but table can, this so until we know if he's staying Well, here's the other dilemma, is that the select board can't make appointments. They don't have the authority to make appointments. So what we decide doesn't really matter because... So well, then town council could make an appointment on the 1st of December, and this group is starting to meet now, aren't they? So which is what? Yeah, um, but then nothing, these are public meetings, so our rep could still go. But but I, it seems like if 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 the if we need a planning board liaison, and if there's a name that comes forward to recommend to the town council for an easy disposition of that of that action, that would be that would seem to be to be efficient. Yeah. Um, so you know, it sounds like Rob and Michael well, need to yeah, Michael. Or, okay. or something. So what what do we? I, I heard. And should the planning board, board be lucky enough to have um, Bob as a continuing member, maybe this could come up to you guys again? And yeah, you know, with sort of a gentle person's agreement that. Sure. Um, so yeah. that's a nomination for Mr. Bert Whistle. Is there, is there was a second? Oh, second. Oh, wow. That's so that's almost by acclamation. So you're second, you're second. That part, it doesn't part. matter. Yeah, why don't we just do it by acclamation? By, by unanimous acclamation. Yeah. Hearing no objection. <laughs> Is that even a thing? <laughs> by consensus, I can say that. Yeah, by consensus. By unanimous <coughs> consent. You will soon have the power to make that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how it works, right? <laughs> I'm not entirely objection, sure. Objection, Your Honor. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure if the appointment is made by the select board, I mean the town council or the town manager. Because okay. the town manager does make a lot of But he has to get ratified. Okay, you're yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he may have to get approval. But this is of the utmost urgent. Yes, yeah. so I'll send that to him right away. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Agriculture Commission no report, DRB. Yeah, we approved uh, a bunch of signs in the last uh, two meetings uh, and uh, sent one back for uh, uh, redesign. Uh, so they're actually doing something uh, in terms of uh, protecting the uh, design integrity of the downtown. Excellent. Huh, I and think uh, so. Poor time. <laughs> yeah. Um, <coughs> municipal of 40. Hello. <laughs> Municipal Affordable Housing Trust. Uh, trust held a forum, which I wasn't yeah. able to attend, unfortunately, at the end of October. We'll be meeting again tomorrow, and most of the work has been focused on design proposals for the East Street School property. So the forum was revisiting kind of a, a design discussion that we had with Kuhn Riddle, where they presented some options. And so at the meeting tomorrow, we'll be looking further at those options and possibly making a recommendation on uh, design criteria for an RFP. And I saw your, I looked at the photos and I saw your, you were there. <coughs> I definitely wanted to attend, I'm not sure I've ever been there. You, your photos, so. Hmm. Yeah. There's a poster of Rob had in the wall. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> they must have been, they must have been posting old photos then. Uh, oh. Interesting. And was Bruce Carson there? They posted for the photos. Oh, that's a good call. Interesting. Who's right? This. Um, somebody posted it, um, attended, it was actually a candidate, attended the Affordable Housing Trust. Um, oh, I had your picture. Well, maybe it was the transportation forum, because Bruce was there and I was there. I okay, so they posted it under the wrong label? Maybe. Yeah. How funny. Were you at that one? Transportation? Okay. okay. Wrong label then. Greg, was there any kind of consensus that came out of that uh, the meeting that you know about? Well, not that I'm aware of. I think that some of the larger questions that remain are whether to keep the existing street school building. And at the 
meeting that I did attend, which was just the trust and maybe 20 members of the public preceding the forum, there was more of a leaning towards keeping the school, in part because, to my surprise, that keeping the school actually would be more cost effective. My, my sense is that generally refurbishing a building like that, especially that building that has a lot of hazardous materials in it, would be more expensive, but the cost estimates from q were actually lower to keep the building. And then at the, the forum, I'm told that there was maybe a leaning towards not keeping the building because of concerns about it not being energy efficient. It's an old brick building. So conversation to be continued. Yeah, OK. It sounds like a <coughs> sort of fascinating project. Yeah. And I'm really sorry that I, I didn't go to it either. Um, zoning subcommittee, we've had that report, UTAC. So one of the questions in the Springfield Republican to candidates was about the P3 project and UTAC's involvement. So I don't think any of us answered that one correctly. But so have you been involved at all in the P3 discussion? No, zero. UTAC has a my subcommittee housing has a net since I think in May. Yeah. Or longer than that. So that was much more for what is the P3 project? So this was in the Gazette. So it's a um, proposed thousand bed housing on the site that we were just oh. right next to what we were just talking about. Those, those, right. um, and it would have some retail, it would have a thousand beds, a parking garage sort of built into it. So it's kind of a combination of three major uses. Um, so this is actually presented to the campus planning committee, the UMass campus planning committee. Um, last week, and actually, it'd be worthwhile to ask them to come give a presentation here because it's really obviously being driven by the university. Are those thousand beds intended for students? Yeah, it'd be only for students, but it wouldn't be creating a thousand new beds, it would be only creating blank hundred, like 800, or because what they'll do is they'll use it as swing space so that they can take students out of other dorms and renovate them. Um, downtown Parking Working Group. We met today, um, and the town has awarded a consultant um, uh, the parking work. So in the next week or two, I'm sure we'll be hearing about that. There's something that came over the wires this afternoon from, you know, what? I did, I'm sorry, I didn't even get a chance to look at it because I, it, we got a. Oh, the recommendation of the Zone Subcommittee? Was that from you guys? Oh, that yeah. was from Christine. That, that was a <coughs> recommendation to the planning board, but mostly to the Zoning Subcommittee that while they were working on their work plan and prioritization of that, um, that they consider parking to a high degree and we specified out to, for them to include the municipal parking district um, developer requirements and any other zoning that impacts parking. Yeah, so I, I always wonder, and I know this is going down the rabbit hole, <laughs> is, the, is the right tool a zoning bylaw or is there a different tool that should be yeah, but just because, um, yeah. Oh, a question on that came up as well, except for me, Christine, about um, the time frame for that consultant. And I had recalled that the consultant was going to be working pretty much on this issue about projecting uh, the implications of current development trends on parking. So should we expect to see something related to the request from the working group? I don't think so. Well, so um, uh, the consultant thing is still sort of in process. Um, we had hoped originally that they would be able to be hired and come on board by the end of September, if not the end of October. Obviously, we're talking about the, they'll be lucky to be the end of November. And part of the problem is um, they need to redo additional parking counts, like they did it in 2016, but we need to have more done. And catching the proper window of that is, is pretty complicated, actually, because you want the students here, you want the holiday, like we're about to do Saturday free parking, right? So obviously you wouldn't do counts then. 
Um, so that might push some of it to late January or February, which pushes everything off longer. So if you guys are working on this now, we want you to be just considering that. And I would expect then when the consultant comes on, it's about six months worth of work, you know, you may not actually get anything formally from them until this time, you know, late summer. Mm -hmm. So, and all, like I said, this is not being worked right now. Don't hold our breath. Yeah, so <laughs> if you guys are thinking about it, you know, just start, you know, tagging those things that impact that. I think we were especially stressing the municipal parking district overlay and, um, you know, develop, when there's development, what kind of, um, you know, whether it be fees in lieu or um, required parking spaces or whatever. Steve, so you mentioned a minute ago that maybe your zoning wasn't the way to go at this. What do you mean? Yeah, um, so everyone focuses on the municipal parking district, so and which I think is one of the most progressive. I don't remember where, where I was today that somebody was talking about this. Somebody was talking about this in, the, in the, our design building. But in a way, it's one of the most progressive um, parts of the zoning bylaw that we've done. So it's been around in part since my understanding since the 60s when we were very car cheap oil blah blah blah. Anyway Amherst at that time had the foresight to have this municipal parking district which enabled you know the entire intent of that is to enable downtown to develop as a um, downtown that was not basically a slave to the car. So there wasn't that, there hasn't been that much development since it was put in place. We know that it's been expanded and we know that there was a lot of concern about um, the impact of that now that, you know, basically there have been several new buildings built downtown. So I guess what I'm like, my personal concern is that tr trying to pull back on that what I find to be a very progressive part of our zoning bylaw in reaction to a perception of parking would be, um, for me, a, a step in the wrong direction. However, I think that a lot of the other things that <coughs> you described, I guess those could be part of the zoning bylaw, like fees and lure or whatever. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily have to be, or a contribution towards um, parking garage, whatever. Those could be zoning bylaw but they don't necessarily have to be. I, I don't know. That's, my concern is that we get, you know, go back to... So somebody on our faculty who lives in Hadley was talking about the big problems with the Hadley Library slash Senior Center where it may be scuttled because they can't figure out how to uh, address the parking issue, which anyone that's ever been to Hadley you know, to have these sort of a head slapping. You know, it's like, don't they have, isn't it the, all that they have? <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, you know, so it's a quandary, but I'm not sure that the zoning bylaw is the, the tool where this could settle. And I, I think i Well, the reason I picked up on what you were saying is because it seems to me that there, there is such a clear zoning bylaw about parking in the municipal parking district and at the moment. At the moment, so right. whatever whatever needs to be done needs to be yeah. done in the context of what what's there now. Yeah, but let's take let's take the affordable housing, you know, as an example. So the affordable housing has been addressed through a number of different tools. The tax incentive being mm -hmm. one that wasn't in the zoning bylaw, inclusionary zoning being one that was in the zoning bylaw, you know, et cetera. So I see that, you know, and I'm speaking way out of school here, but I think that the, either the real or perceived parking issue is there's a, a number of different tools of which the zoning may be one, but everyone likes to, a lot of people like to focus on the municipal parking district as just make developers park on their, you know, just make the owners of the property provide parking is a very sort of anti-downtown, anti, it's not a realistic solution for these very small parcels in downtown that don't have, you know, frankly they don't have room. Even though they have surface parking now, but once you, if you 
Yeah. Imagine a downtown where there's that it's higher than that. Parking doesn't work because yeah. Go I on. just had an interesting experience going to Florence. I went to their um, their forum on downtown Florence. This was last week or the week before. And they really have sort of the opposite problem that we have. They have buildings popping up here and there, but separated by seas of parking. So they yeah. actually have a load of parking and probably too much parking for the uses that are there. Yeah. So they often have these big empty parking yeah. lots and they're trying to figure out what should they do. Should they start doing infill in the places where they have parking yeah. and not have so many, have not have the requirement for so many parking spaces for whatever they've got going on there. So they were trying to wrestle with that issue, which I thought was interesting because, you know, it's so different from what we were seeing there. And we're at a period of some major shift. I don't know, I don't think anyone knows what it will be. Like just the number of Ubers that you see now on the streets. Mm -hmm. So I, I call them, there's a new, <laughs> there's a new phenomenon of the car stopped in the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've come across this. But you see the car stopped in the middle of the road, and nine times out of ten, they're going to have a little U on it because they're they're yeah. lost or they're waiting for somebody. So you so that's the phenomenon of Uber. Mm -hmm. But what that means is that there are not those cars parked in a parking lot. Their cars are, you know, sort of in motion, put to work, which is kind of a great thing, right? So no, as long as they're not just circling the block waiting for their ride. Yeah, well, we're not, yeah. So sometimes they do that. So we, so we have a we have a faculty member that doesn't have a car, and she relies almost completely on PVTA, PVTA and Uber to get around. Yeah, curbside management is something that the downtown yeah. parking working group is because it ties in with the commercial parking we have. You know, we have two minutes. And, 15 minute parking and can some of these all be combined? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you have, you need areas for cars to pull over, but then you might lose parking spots and there's yeah, a right. balance. But just on the zoning thing, I just want to say, you know, it's a bigger picture. And I'm not saying, you know, whether it be public or private or combo, if there's parking garages or parking built into buildings, we still have issues in the BL, I believe, for built, you know, and that was always hanging out there. So when I was, you know, I didn't spell that out, but, you know, that's something that we're also, like, if you're rethinking, going back to that BL thing, you know, consider parking in it. Does that help explain? Sure. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big, big, big discussion. I was curious to what, what your uh, specific point was relative to not being a zoning issue. That was it, that there's other tools that might I'm be. Sure. No. Yeah, just um, report of the chair. So I was going to say this is my last meeting and how great it's been working <laughs> with all of you guys. But it's <laughs> 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 asking November 28th. <laughs> but anyway, that that is if this is our last meeting, it's been a complete honor to be part of this board for um, almost 10 years. So I'm going to start crying. <laughs> so I think I'll leave it. Actually, there was one more thing, um, which is I had said that we could discuss the planning board dinner after the election, thinking that I would have plenty of time. I don't have to invite all the town council. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> but we're, I'm still up for it. If there's a time that works and we're approaching Thanksgiving, so one option would be yeah, should we? <laughs> um, yeah. We could do it later in the year and invite you. Yeah, mm. yeah, let's do that. We can also do a get together that doesn't mean like a, a house and a potluck and everything. They, like when Jonathan Tucker went, had the department, I know people got together at Peace Drive 63, so maybe yeah. there's some. some yeah, that's just a great idea. That we, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a great idea. I mean, I'd love to do that. It's just, um, yeah, if. I'm going to have a new kitchen as of sometime next wow. spring, so Woo! maybe that has <laughs> one place to go. <laughs> but yeah, so if you guys have a, a dinner, we'll invite please you. invite me. <laughs> Very well. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. And I, um, well, I have to...
let me say one more thing that um, because I did run for town council, a lot of the discussions that I was part of had to do with planning things and you know sort of um, explaining what this you know this body and the bodies before it have done. You know, you guys are great. It's just been, um, you know, a, a real pleasure to work on all kinds of, you know, it's, it's been a great experience. I'm really glad that you'll be able to represent the planning board well on the town council mm -hmm. and explain yeah. things to them because I think a lot of them don't really understand a lot of what we do. Yeah. And I was, you know, the two other former planning board members were in the pool, um, Aaron, mm -hmm. Hayden, and Paul Bodowski, but I'm the last one standing, so go planning board. <laughs>